The question to be asked, of course, is what was the source of the contamination and how did it get into the water? The Hastings District Council interim report on genotype analysis released last week identified a ruminant as the probable source. Now, given even if we only count dairy, beef and sheep farming, there are somewhere in excess of 35 million ruminants on New Zealand farms. Does this mean there's a similar risk of contamination elsewhere? Dr. Russell Death is Professor of Freshwater Ecology at Massey University. He studied freshwater in the broader Tukituki, Papanui, Karamu area in which Havelock North is found. He said he has never seen fresh water in New Zealand with poorer and lower MCI levels. More on that shortly. But first of all, was he surprised by the contamination of a town water supply? A town water supply in New Zealand is infected by many of the pathogenic organisms which live in our water supplies. It's not surprising at all. In fact, it's inevitable, really. So if it's inevitable, will this happen again? Um, I, I think it's highly likely to happen again. Um, as with you know, many infections, it's always a question of probabilities. So um, I think that it's highly likely to happen again, and I certainly won't be surprised at all if this happens again in, in another probably smaller town uh, water treatment um, plant, um, usually rural areas where their ability to fund um, better treatment uh, is not as great. And in the sort of high intensity dairy areas of New Zealand, so the Waikato, Manawatu, uh, Canterbury Plains, Southland, Taranaki. What is the scientific veracity? In other words, as dispassionately as possible, how much does intensive dairy farming increase the likelihood when it's near a water supply of this kind of contamination occurring? I think it's nearly universal around freshwater scientists at least that water quality in New Zealand has been declining for upwards of 25 years. There are a few measures in our waterways that seem to be improving slightly and many of the dairy industry put that down to their um, best practice management. Um, it's questionable whether that's a result of that or whether it's just other changes but Certainly, I mean, in particular, the key one is nitrate. So nitrate levels are increasing. That is predominantly coming from the urine of cows. And in general, at least up until the, the price declined, we were feeding them a lot of palm kernel. They can't process that palm kernel very well. Creates very high nitrate concentrations in their urine. That goes down to a little spot on the grass and that inevitably ends up in the waterways. And associated with that urine, um, either directly from faeces as well, or just because of where it's coming from in the animal, uh, various other pathogens that get carried into the waterways as well. And if you end up drinking that stuff because you are in a small, not particularly wealthy rural community that can't uh, spend as much money as they might hope making their water clean, you'll get sick. Yes, that's right. And I mean... But um, in many ways, in the Havelock North area, I would be equally concerned about many of the, the chemicals that they use on their vineyards and orchards because none of those will be removed by any water treatment either. Um, chlorine can get rid of the bacteria, but it can't get rid of, rid of many of those pesticides and uh, chemicals that the, the horticulture industry uses. And I suspect that's why the MCI values in those rivers are actually so low. Can you explain that for us? So people are going to be listening and thinking, what the hell is an MCI value? What the hell is an MCI value? It's basically a measure of the health of the system. So the higher the number, the healthier the, the river system in terms of its ecology. Um, and so it's not a direct measure of how safe it is for people to swim or drink, but they're related to each other. So OK, I'm sorry to cut in there. So specifically, rather than generally, have you studied the MCI levels in the Tuki Tuki catchment area? Yes. Yep. And what did you find? That um, in most of the areas where you've got high intensity agriculture, not surprisingly, you've got very low ecological health. The MCIs drop down to the 80. Um, the Hawke's Bay Regional Council have done their own um, sampling around the Karamu catchment, and that's where they found MCI values down to 60, which, um, as I said, I, I hadn't realised that the MCI could actually get that low.
Wait, wait a sec, sorry to cut in there. So have you ever seen lower MCI levels in a New Zealand river? No. Right, it's that bad in this area. As I said, I've, most uh, MCI values go down to about 80, and that's a very polluted river. To drop down to 60 is, is really surprising, and, and I've never really found that before in any of the rivers that I've sampled in New Zealand, some of which uh, I would consider extremely degraded. You've sent students out to sample this water, have you? Yes, yes. And what did they find? Um, they were very shocked. Um, they found dead animals on the, on the riverbank and kind of came back and said that they didn't really want me to send them out sampling those kind of streams again. So, if sometimes that kind of water is inadvertently introduced into a town's drinking supply, what does that mean? We really... Uh, firmly believe that it's only a question of time before people get sick as a result. Um, I think even if people start to improve, you know, chlorinating all of these water supplies, that there are still going to be other issues associated with changes in land use practice, the fact that we in have intensified the dairy farming industry so much that people are still going to be at risk of various diseases associated with waterborne um, pathogens. I mean, we have the highest level of many of these waterborne gastro gastrointestinal diseases in the OECD. That's Dr Russell Death, who's Professor of Freshwater Ecology at Massey University.